A number of things that I think will be of uh, great interest to you personally, and then from the standpoint of analyzing our culture and uh, analyzing our world. The first thing I want to say is this. Um, as I look at the media and the media commentators and the so-called experts, what I see is a pervasive tendency to, to uh, look at the symptoms of a problem and not the root of the problem. The other thing that I see, especially in our media complex, uh, both liberal and so-called conservative, is that people are looking at bits and pieces of a situation. Now, that would be true if we were talking about uh, Christians. Um, they have been looking at bits and pieces of information for, well, since time began in terms of the first century church, but more recently in America, over the last um, hundred years plus, we've been looking at bits and pieces instead of looking at the entire uh, puzzle piece put together. And see, when you go into like a uh, micro focus mode, you're, you're, you, you zoom, zoom in <clears throat> and you look at these pieces, but you're ignoring the big picture. And so what you have is you have an incredible distortion of reality, which uh, causes you not to be able to deal with it effectively. And as you listen to me, Paul McGuire, on uh, our analysis program. I call this prophetic intelligence analysis because it's a combination uh, of extensive scientific, geopolitical, economic research and uh, research based on uh, the Old Testament and New Testament, not just as a historical document, but as a living document. Uh, which is the inspired or inerrant Word of God, which I believe is supernatural, by the way, and I make no apologies for it. And when you integrate the information system of the Bible, special, especially Bible prophecy, and you integrate what's called a biblical worldview into news analysis, geopolit uh, geopolitical analysis, <clears throat> cultural analysis, all of a sudden, uh, the smoke and mirrors light show disappears and you see and understand reality. You know, I learned a long time ago that whenever I um, would go uh, into a college classroom, <laughs> it was especially true there, and whenever I would um, um, sit down and hear a sales presentation on, on refinancing my home or, or whatever, a car deal that involved uh, some kind of financial uh, deal, I, I learned something early on, and that was when you can't understand it, it's either because you're stupid, you're not paying attention, maybe you're tired, or they're blowing smoke in your eyes. And I remember sitting down with a very well-known bank, and uh, we were buying, uh, I don't know, our third home. Uh, and I remember this girl talking very fast, uh, because she didn't want to give us time to think. And I remember her pushing uh, aggressively uh, an adjustable rate mortgage. Now, I'm not knocking adjustable rate mortgages, because for some people, they may be a good thing. But for us, at that time, it was not a good thing. Uh, and, well, we still don't have an adjustable rate mortgage. Um, but I said to myself, why, why is what she's saying so confusing? Because she's hiding. She's concealing information from me. And so the way she tries to override our intellects and our uh, uh, perception is to barrage us with confusing information, a uh, smoke and mirror show. And then the other thing I realized was why was the bank, so it, the bank's goal is to make money off of me and you, why was the bank so interested in switching me from a um, fixed rate mortgage to an adjustable rate mortgage? 
And obviously, if the bank had that much interest in it, it wasn't because it would help me. It was because they would make a lot more money off me. So I learned the principle that when, uh, oftentimes, when things are confusing, it's because you're not being told the truth or you're not being uh, told the full truth. And that is very much the case in the mass media in the world today, the global media, the American media especially. Uh, I really don't believe that we have a conservative me media. Um, there are exceptions. There are notable exceptions, but they're far and few between where you have genuine conservative or libertarian voices that are really interested in the truth. And then on, on the other side, you do have some uh, what you might call leftist or uh, progressive uh, news sources that have integrity, and they're far and few between too, because most of them are just in interested in propaganda, the same with the conservative ones. And you have those uh, uh, smaller percentage of leftist progressive uh, news sites and media organizations that really do have integrity and they want to commu communicate to you the truth. So, we're, the American public is bombarded with news information and it's really a big smoke and mirrors show. And it, it consists of lots of lights and colors and fancy sets and expensive suits and it's very pa fast paced, it's stroboscopic like a, like a music video, it's constant uh, changing of images and camera angles and uh, you know I know a lot about this because I've appeared on hundreds of the biggest cable news shows to debate on with the biggest uh, names in the cable news business. Um, so I've been on the inside and been the guest of many of these people a and some of them uh, the minority percentage have integrity and are trying to communicate the truth. But I would say the, the, the majority are simply uh, what I call uh, uh, Orwell's pigs. Now I know that's derogatory, but it happens to be the name of an article that I just uh, published, which you can read at paulmcguire.org or paulmcguire.com. Uh, Orwell's pigs by Paul McGuire. <laughs> It's, it's, it's satirical, but I'm not just saying Orwell's pigs to be mean. Uh, Orwell wrote a book exposing Big Brother called 1984, and uh, he wrote another book called Animal Farm where one of the main characters was a pig. So the reason I'm using the word pig is for satirical purposes, not just to be mean. Now, the other... Um, technique is you constantly use flashing lights, bells and whistles, <clears throat> titles beneath the screen, uh, constantly cutting away to visual images, charts and graphs, different camera angles, uh, uh, depending upon your sex or whatever, sexually attractive uh, women or sexually attractive men, uh, is a prominent feature at most of the major cable news network shows because it draws people's attention. As, as primal as it is, sex sells even in news. And that's why, why you will see the cutaway shots uh, of uh, the, the, the leg of an attractive female guest, especially if she's wearing a high skirt or stockings and high heels, you will see the obligatory long shot where you will see a lot of her leg or other uh, female attributes and you will see close-ups of males uh, in their uh, expensive suits uh, who, who are appealing. Uh, the, the, the trivial word is eye candy but really it applies here. But it's all meant to be a distraction from the content. You see behind the smoke and mirrors there's no linear, rational content that actually explains the truth of a particular political or economic situation. There's no rational content that explains that truth um, in a simple, straightforward, and, and uh, 
linear manner that people can understand. It's not all that difficult to explain what appears to be complex. It's not complex. It's not any more complex than when I was sitting down at the bank and being barraged with a bunch of words uh, in the bank's effort to push me into a particular loan package. The, the loan structure wasn't hard to understand. The person selling me the loan package was deliberately and intentionally making it confusing for us so that we would make the decision that the bank wanted us to make, thus the smoke and mirrors technique. And that's what you see when you try to understand what's going on in Congress, <coughs> the House, the Senate, the President, the way bills work, the Supreme Court, the relationship between these entities and the Constitution, uh, the budget, uh, the deficit, uh, the Federal Reserve. Um, if, if you notice, your average American has no clue as to what's really going on. And it's not because they're stupid, it's because they're being barraged with smoke and mirrors and intentionally deceived so that the people who control all the news media, which is just six major corporations, with the exception of uh, the few independent corporations or privately held uh, media organizations and the internet and social media. So you have six corporations controlling all of the flow of information and they have an agenda. And that agenda, by the way, is a world socialist government. Now, in case that bothers you, or, that's what the Fabian Socialists said who planned out the world that we live in now. They called it uh, a world socialist government. That was the goal. And uh, that's not accidental. That's the philosophy they believe in. Um, you know, the media and the politicians are puppets. Whether they're Republicans or Democrats, they work for the same master. And they like to create the illusion uh, for the American people that there's actually a battle uh, for the direction of our country. They like to create the illusion that they are fighting for your rights or your needs. They like to create an illusion that you live in a democratic republic, not a totalitarian regime. That's all the smoke and mirrors, that it's an illusion. The reality is that the Republicans and the Democrats work in collusion together because they're owned, again, by the same masters, <clears throat> along with the President and the Supreme Court. But the media also marches in lockstep uh, to the agenda. So no matter who gets elected or which political party is in power, the, the, the momentum is always in the direction of world socialism because that's what their owners, the elite, that's what they want. And so they create an illusion that they're actually doing something. Now there are exceptions. There are brave men and women who, who depart from uh, the good old boy or good old girl network and actually do speak the truth and they pay a heavy price. The same thing in media. There are talk show hosts on television and on radio that tell the truth. And some of them have enormous audiences, but they pay a price because they're demonized and they're marginalized. And that's the way it is. We live in a soft totalitarian government that is moving. It's Orwellian already. It's big brother already, but it's moving into a uh, lockdown totalitarian uh, America. And that's where we're going, and you should know that. Now, I'm Paul McGuire. If you just started to watch me, you can get more information, free articles, free YouTubes, uh, downloads, links at my websites that give uh, a tremendous amount of information. Most of the articles go viral um, at
paulmcguire.org or paulmcguire.com. There's a blog site there. You really need to, I don't really push it and I should, you need to sign up for the e-blast because then you get stuff sent to you that, that uh, other people don't get. Uh, videos, uh, interviews, and all kinds of things that other people charge as you know premium packages uh, you get for free if you sign up for for Paul McGuire uh, the Paul McGuire intelligent prophetic intelligence e-blast it's free by simply going to paulmcguire.org or paulmcguire.com and McGuire is spelled M-C-G-U-I-R-E paulmcguire.com or paulmcguire.org also the free blog and I try to have lots hours of uh, uh, of uh, footage of me speaking at conferences, large prophecy conferences with five, six thousand people. And um, I give away as much free as I can. We obviously need to charge for some things, otherwise we couldn't continue doing what we're doing. So go to those sites and, and help spread the word. And, uh, you know, I've spent a lifetime researching this stuff and uh, my research is documented uh, and it's provable. I'm not just pulling it out of my hat. So go there and visit that. Now, we're going to get into the media uh, a little bit further here by talking about George Orwell. And uh, in a second, I'm going to read you a quote from Mr. Orwell. George Orwell was the author of 1984. 